Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt, welcome back. Today I am talking about Wizards Tales of Arcadia. Now, I know what you're thinking, Matt, that is a kid show, I've seen it on Netflix, and you would be right. Bear with me though. So, I was pestered by Sebastian for ages uh, to watch Trollhunters Tales of Arcadia. Matt, I think you should watch Trollhunters. No. Watch Trollhunters! Watch Trollhunters! So eventually he managed to wear me down and I was like, right, okay, fine, I will check it out. Uh, so I did, I started watching it on Netflix and you know what, I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. The way I would kind of describe it is, I think it's kind of like... Thor's just coming, making lots and lots of noise. The way I would kind of describe it is almost as kind of like being his generation's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but more for children than Buffy the Vampire Slayer was. Uh, but it is actually really, really good. The The storytelling uh, is absolutely amazing. The storylines are actually really kind of amazing if you're into that whole kind of like sort of fantasy genre, uh, which I obviously massively am. The show was created by Gamora del Toro um, and has been produced by DreamWorks. So the animation as well is absolutely top notch. So Wizards is supposed to be the culmination of the whole Tales of Arcadia series, uh, which comprises of three different TV shows. The first one being Trollhunters, which ran for three seasons on Netflix. Uh, it was then followed up by Three Below, uh, which ran for two seasons on Netflix, uh, which kind of shifted the story over to a new set of characters. Uh, it kind of dealt more with aliens instead of trolls. Um, and then finally, it's all uh, coming together in this final show, Wizards, which is now dealing with wizards. Uh, but it was kind of promised that it was gonna bring everyone together uh, to kind of wrap the whole thing up. So with it being the culmination uh, of the Tales of Arcadia series, uh, all of the voice cast returns from the previous shows. Um, and that's one thing that kind of initially surprised me a lot about Trollhunters. Uh, there are actually some really pretty big names in the show. Uh, you've got David Bradley, you've got Kelsey Grammer, you've got uh, Lena Headey, uh, Mark Hamill's in there, and uh, for Wizards as well, uh, they actually even got Brian Blessed. Brian Blessed plays a dragon. I mean, what more do you want, really? The voice cast is absolutely incredible. Uh, across all of these shows. So the story this time around follows our heroes with uh, their new friend and kind of new main character of the show, Duxy, uh, who is a wizard who's Merlin's apprentice, as they're thrust back in time, uh, just on the cusp of war between trolls and mankind. Um, the show does kind of a really good job of delving into lots of things that were kind of mentioned, like the history of troll hunters. Um, you know, so we actually get to see like the Battle of Kilhad Bridge, we actually get to see Day of the First Troll Hunter. What I really liked about it though is how they kind of mixed it in more with uh, further Arthurian legends. Uh, so obviously King Arthur appears in this. Uh, once again we get to see Morgana. Um, and then ob obviously, you know, we get to see sort of other things like uh, the Lady of the Lake and, you know, various knights of the Round Table. So essentially our heroes have to get back to the present without messing up the past too much. Um, obviously hijinks ensue and they do end up messing up one or two things in the timeline, but ultimately everything kind of plays out how it played out or how it should have played out uh, so it's kind of one of those like back to the future things like did them going back in time make the events happen like they happened but slightly differently but it's okay wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff I think one of the main benefits of going back in time as I said and you kind of see these events play out is that you know they've been built up in our heads so much uh, I was kind of really excited to see what they did with them and this is where the series kind of has its biggest downfall with it only being one series, everything just kind of feels a little bit rushed. I don't know if that's down to the fact that Three Below didn't do so well, so Netflix were like, right, we're only gonna give you a season to wrap it up, or whether it was an actual deliberate choice by uh, Del Toro and sort of everyone else involved in the project. Uh, but I definitely feel that the show does kind of suffer slightly for it. So the story kind of happens over two timelines. You have them going back into the past, um, and then you have them dealing with the threat in the present day. So first episode is like quick build up. Here's the new characters, uh, here's who's back. Let's get on with it. Then episodes two to seven are kind of dealing with everything in the past, um, leaving eight, nine, and 10 to sort of deal with everything in the present and wrap everything up. Now, the story hits like all the right beats, like everyone's character arc and what happens to them. Um, 
you know, it's great. All the story bits are there, like everything works. The problem is, is it all just feels a tad bit rushed. I really think as a whole, uh, it would have benefited from being two seasons. You know, the first season dealing with stuff in the past, second season dealing with stuff in the future. I've actually just finished watching season two of Umbrella Academy. I will do a video on that. Uh, so I was about to start reading uh, the, the second Umbrella Academy graphic novel. Um, and there's a forward in here by Neil Gaiman. Um, and there's a line in here which I think kind of applies uh, to Wizards, which I quite liked. So he says, as Roger Zelsney once pointed out, it isn't the story, although the story is beautifully constructed, but the way that the story is told. And I think that kind of really works with Wizards. Like, the story is brilliant. Sort of where they take it, what the final threat is and so on is really, really good. As I said, everyone's character arcs, what happens to them is all really, really good. I think it's just ultimately that the way the story was told, i.e. it was just too rushed, that really, really lets it down, considering it's supposed to be the culmination of the entire Tales of Arcadia saga. Or so we thought. Obviously, it turns out that's not the case whatsoever, and there is actually going to be a Trollhunters movie coming out next year. Again though, I'm a little bit concerned because it's like one and a half hours to wrap up. I mean, one and a half hours to two hours to kind of, again, wrap up the story when, you know, you had 10, 20 minute episodes to do it. And again, it felt a bit rushed. So there we go. Uh, overall, I actually did really enjoy Wizards. As I say, I just felt it was a teensy weeny little bit too rushed. Uh, but if you never checked it out and you're kind of into watching animation stuff, uh, I would definitely recommend watching Trollhunters and Wizards. Probably skip three below, you don't need to see it to know what's, uh, what's going on in Wizards at all, but I would definitely recommend watching Trollhunters, definitely recommend watching Wizards. And yeah, until next time guys, take care. I, I think you should watch Trollhunters. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should watch it.